I own and have played a lot of dead card games, and some of them are really bad, and it totally makes sense why they are no longer among the living. But sometimes, they can surprise you with an interesting gameplay mechanic or two that just seem to never be used again. Let's do a little grave robbing and go over three of these mechanics that you should steal for your own use. You know, if they make sense, don't just steal all three of them at the same time, that might not be that good. First off, let's go all the way back to 1995. Magic is booming and every other company is scrambling to make their own version of the collectible card game. Seriously, like 40 games came out that year. A lot of them were based on tabletop RPGs, which for a while people actually thought would completely be replaced by TCGs, and yeah, th that didn't happen. We got Shadowrun, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Mutant Chronicles, Cult, and the one I'm actually pulling from today, Over the Edge, or as the card game called it, On the Edge. Very well-known properties by today's standards, I'm sure. Whoopsie doodle on my part, uh, On the Edge actually came out in 1994, just pretend like I'm right. So like usual. On first glance, it is very apparently a game that is from 1995. It also appears to just be a generic magic clone gameplay wise. There are resource cards that you use to play characters that can then fight the other characters or contribute towards the win condition of the game. However, when you play characters, they go in a grid, but not like the new trend of grid games where there's this big chessboard kind of thing that guys move around on. On the Edge has kind of a soft grid where the positioning of your characters make the grid. The grid can be up to three rows or ranks and as many columns or files as you want. When you play a second guy, it can go anywhere next to the first one, even diagonally. If you put it in front of the first guy, you now have two ranks but it doesn't matter which two because they aren't set on the board. If you play a third one, it can still go above the topmost character or below the bottommost one. The grid is fluid. <laughs> now what the grid does for actual gameplay is make a defensive line. Characters can't attack through other characters unless they're tapped. Wait, that's not the word this game uses. You can't attack through other characters unless they're cranked. Yeah unless they have a keyword that lets them bypass characters. This lets you set up defensive lines between important characters that generate influence, which is what you need to win the game, and the beat sticks that exist to punch things and not think very hard. All the while your opponent is trying to sneak around your ranks or mind control the big number guys so that they can turn around and destroy the influencers. I take it back, this game's not stuck in 1995, it is relevant to modern times. You can also move existing characters on the grid to any spot a new character could be played by cranking them. Overall, I thought it was a neat take on the grid mechanic that doesn't involve moving your cards all over the place, but still retains the tactical element of placing your cards correctly and outsmarting your opponent's positioning. Unless you play a card that changes the whole win condition of the game and your opponent doesn't know what's going on anymore. This game is weird. Let's move on. Next, we're gonna jump to a big TCG lull point in 2017. The number of new games is now not 40, but it looks like Bandai is plotting something big. And also something stupid, and that's what we're talking about. They made this game that lasted one whole set called Zombie World Order. Something in the world has happened, and everyone is now a zombie. And now they fight or something. This game also looks pretty bog standard. Players can play any of their cards as resources, and then use those resources to play zombies from different colored factions, and attack the other players' zombies and players until their life points hit zero. But... When a zombie dies, it doesn't go to the discard pile. It goes to a second battle area called the splattered area where the damage on it resets and it gets tapped, but otherwise it continues to act as normal. If it dies again in the splattered area, then it goes to the dead area, which is the discard pile. It starts to get interesting though when you can bring zombies from the splattered area back to the primary battle area, the undead area. Yeah, these names aren't great. Every zombie has a revival cost that you pay not by tapping resources, but by flipping them face down. When they're face down, they no longer have a color, but otherwise act normally as a resource. And to play or revive a zombie, at least one of the resources you're using needs to be the same color as the zombie. You can also flip a face down resource back up instead of playing a new one at the beginning of your turn. The game's spell type cards, events, are also paid 
made by flipping resources face down. Resources can be both tapped and flipped on the same turn, so it makes for a pretty interesting combo of knowing when to need colors and when to flippity flip. There's also a keyword that lets you flip resources back up when the given zombie does damage to an opponent's life, and that adds to the calculation. The double death makes the combat puzzle a little more unique. Every zombie can block, and tapped zombies can be targeted for attacks. But it's not enough to kill a zombie once, because it can just come back to the undead area and then need to be killed twice again. Unless your opponent has already flipped too many of their resources face down. The game was pretty much dead on arrival due to having a weird theme, but I think the double death and dual mana systems were pretty neat. And one 68 card set with one promo was definitely not enough to explore everything that you could do in these systems, and no one has ever used them again. I bet this one could have been a banger if the theme wasn't, everyone is a zombie. There's definitely a humor to it, but it's probably a little too niche. The first gameplay video I ever made for this channel was actually for Zombie World Order, so you could check that out if this sounded interesting. Moving on, next! Finally, I have a little bit of a weird one. Let's go to 2005, the middle of the every anime must have a card game wave of card games. There's a win condition out there referred to as life decking, where instead of a life total, attacks will send cards from the top of your deck to the discard pile, and you lose when your deck runs out of cards. That's right, every deck is a mill deck with life decking. This win condition used to be pretty prevalent in the 90s and 2000s, but has fallen out of favor with big company published games in the last decade or so. Some have even gone so far as to call it one of the seven deadly sins of trading card games. The reasoning is that it feels really bad to see cards that you want to play just go to the discard pile. Aw oh man, not Carl! I need that boy to win! But what if you never saw what cards you lost from your deck as damage? And that's exactly what Gundam War did. When you took damage in that game, it did not go to the normal discard pile that other used cards went in, called the Junkyard. It went to a special damage only zone called the Discard Pile. Yeah, this game was kind of a mess, or at least the English version was. Cards go from your deck to the discard pile face down though, so you don't know if you lost your Ace Psycho Gundam 2 or not, you'll just have to keep playing and not think about it. One of the colors in the game, brown, even gets to draw from their discard pile. That's cool. There are still some brave souls out there trying to do life decking, and I think this is a decent answer to See card go discard make me sad. And that's why it's on this list. But that's really all I have to say about it. And if I have to talk about Gundam War anymore, I might have a stroke. And that's three TCG mechanics that you should totally steal. Neat take on a grid, neat resource and creature battler mechanic, and a neat solution to the feels bad of a system that is mostly not liked for being feels bad. What mechanic would you like to see again? Magic banding? Yu-Gi-Oh! Gemini summon but useful? Let me know in the comments so I can steal ideas for my next list of things that you should steal. I'm Two Lanes the Card Game Crib Keeper, and I'm out.